Now this SUV right here is unmistakably the Land Rover Defender. The big tough SUV from Land Rover that is an absolute hit all over the world and in India as well. But this one, it's a little bit different. That's because it is the bigger, longer, larger version called the Land Rover Defender 130. And we are here in sunny Dubai to give it a go. People just love the Defender, don't they? And a lot of it is down to its big boxy looks. That has largely remained the same on this 130, but of course the proportions have changed a bit. And that has proven to be a bit polarizing. But what do you think of the way the new Defender 130 looks? Tell us in the comments section below and in case you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon. And if you like this video, we'd love it if you hit the thumbs up button. Now Defenders are the toughest and most practical subspecies of Land Rover, so really adding even more practicality seems like a no-brainer. To that end, the Defender 130 is 340 mm longer than the 110, but the added length is not where you might think. The wheelbase is exactly the same as the Defender 110. All the extra length is behind the rear wheels, 340 mm longer behind the rear axle. And as a result, once you swing the big tailgate open, you get as much as 389 liters of boot space with all three rows up. Then, if you were to flip this down, you free up as much as 1200 liters of boot space. And if you went to fold the second row down as well, you get a whole 2,500 liters. That's pretty much a van. And don't for one moment think the boot space has come at the cost of passenger space. Oh no. The second row remains as cavernous as ever, but what absolutely impresses is the all new third row. Right, so as you probably saw, it was quite a step up into the cabin, but really the access to the rear is not too bad at all. And once I'm sat back here, the space is quite remarkable. Yes, this seat can slide a little bit further back, but I don't think that's necessary. And I've actually got second row knee room in the third row, which is absurd. Even for a large SUV like this, they've really maximized the space. And part of the reason for that is because the extension is behind the axle. So that also lets you sit quite high up on the wheel arches rather than between them. And it also maximizes knee room, gives you a lot of headroom. There is, of course, another glass roof here. And you're not sat in that extremely knees up position. Yes, thigh support isn't as good as in the second row. But you'll agree, it's really, really comfy back here, even for three passengers. So yes, this is truly an eight-seat luxury SUV. Really, the most practical in terms of seating. Everything in front of the second row remains the Defender we know and love. And that means a solidly built interior that's not too flashy, but instead rugged and purposeful, with loads, and I mean loads, of storage space. It's also got more than enough tech in the form of digital dials and the big PV Pro touchscreen that houses all the modern features you expect in a luxury SUV. It's also here that you'll find the vast battery of off-road tech, which was put to the test almost immediately. This is Dubai, and you know what that means. Now, I have been off-roading in a Land Rover Defender before, and I have been dune bashing before. But dune bashing in a Land Rover Defender, that's new to me. And although I have quite a deal of confidence in Land Rover's legendary off-road abilities, uh, this is quite terrifying for a few reasons. First up, this is the Defender 130, the largest Defender there's ever been, 340 mm longer than even the Defender 110, which is already a big, heavy and massive car. And then we've raised it to its maximum off-road height and they've planted a bunch of stuff on the roof which makes things even more top-heavy and terrifying when you're planted at some really outrageous angles on the side of a sand dune uh, sort of sliding away <laughs> uh, from the direction you're meant to be going. So I think I'm going to put a little bit more distance between myself and the lead car just in the name of 
safety and feeling a little bit more secure. But hey, so far so good. This car is handling all of it with ease. Right, down a very, very steep <laughs> slope there. Okay, so keep the momentum going obviously because the sand out here is incredibly soft. Make it over the crest, trust the electronics because Land Rover's approach with the new Defender and indeed all of its bigger SUVs is now to use a lot of electronics and software to support the hardware and they take care of all the work for you. This is all tied together by the proprietary terrain response to system that tells the Defender exactly what's going on under each of its four wheels and how it should adapt to the situation. It can do this automatically or you can select one of the several terrain modes. Right now is a sand mode, the gearbox in automatic and maximum off-road height which uh, Land Rover tells us is all you need really. Don't try and uh, interfere better because the car actually knows better. It is of course riding on uh, mud terrain tires, this is not standard road tires of course, we're not that crazy. But as a result of all those things, it is cruising through this. Of course you need to be, it's not absolutely idiot proof. Uh, you got to know when to throttle, when to steer and a few things like that. And yes, there have been a few uh, instances of people getting stuck. I'm not even worried about straight up near vertical cliff faces in the sand here. It's just, it's just so easy in this car. So this being the Defender 130, what it's done is only increase the rear overhang. The wheelbase is the same as the Defender 110. It's only a bit more rear overhang which affects the departure angle a bit but out here in the desert that's not really proven to be a problem and they say it won't be either. Remarkable vehicle. Now fun as this is and we could really have kept going forever in this SUV. The simple fact is most owners, in India at least, would rarely venture anywhere near this far off-road. So really it was time to dust off our tyres, return to comfort mode and see how the longest Defender handles a regular old highway. Now out here on the road, uh, the Land Rover Defender 130 is unsurprisingly a very good luxury SUV. Uh, we knew that already because we've experienced it with uh, the 110 and the 90 before this. And really that's because it now shares so many mechanicals with the likes of the Range Rover. Uh, that means air suspension and aluminium intensive chassis and just all the gadgets and gizmos you'd expect uh, in this price bracket of luxury SUV. Yes, things take a more rugged look and appearance inside, but really it's all finely crafted materials and well put together, well screwed together just with a few rugged touches like the exposed rivets and uh, body colored exposed metal. Uh, that kind of stuff is cool. But uh, more than that, uh, we're driving the P400 petrol, the six cylinder model, and it has plenty of power. Uh, and this one is really good. It fits right in, did a great job out on the dunes and doing a super job here on uh, the highway in the Middle East. Despite the fact these cars are riding on mud terrain tires and not road tires, uh, the ride is incredible. It's got that typical uh, air suspension waftiness, just a little bit of float in uh, comfort mode as we have it in now. Uh, and yet a pretty planted feel because of all this weight. Do you feel the extra size of this car? Well, certainly not here on this big highway. Uh, and I suppose maybe in India you got to be a little bit careful on narrower roads of all the extra length hanging over the back. But overall this feels like a big luxury SUV and I think buyers of it will be quite used to that and quite happy for it. And these buyers will have to have deep pockets because at 1.30 to 1.41 crore rupees ex showroom, the Defender 130 is about 11 lakh more than the equivalent 110. That's even a bit more than the BMW X7 or Mercedes-Benz GLS, which are the go-to three-row luxury SUVs right now. While its interior doesn't quite have the bling or wow factor of either of them, nor the second row comfort, what the Defender 130 does offer is a more spacious third row and yet more boot space too, as well as a go anywhere ability that few can match. The bigger conundrum buyers will no doubt have is whether to stretch to the 130 over the 110. 
because for all its capability, it's really the Defender's cool factor that buyers want. For many, the 110 will be big and practical enough, and you can even specify two small third row seats in that SUV. So then what is the 130 for? Well, it's for those who put function over form and want the most practical luxury SUV there is. The 130 is the logical completion of the Defender family. It's still tough as nails and simply adds more utility to the most utility-focused Land Rover SUV.